All right, we are here in the uh, history, the council history room with guest curator Chris Melisinos. We're going to get some quick questions and answers from him right now, so let's, uh, let's get started. First of all, welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. Excellent, excellent. Our first question for you, uh, someone who doesn't play games will obviously get a wealth of knowledge from this entire exhibit. What do you think a gaming enthusiast who may be more familiar with a lot of gaming history will take away? Well, you know, I think so many people that kind of appropriate video games and make it part of their lives, they're going to come in here and see something that really resonates with them, something that kind of takes them back, maybe even to a point when they said, wow, I forgot I really used to love that game and really love to play it. What I hope that they take away from the exhibition is the incredibly expressive range that these 40 years have borne out. And hopefully they'll discover a few things about the intent of the author, the intent of the designer or the developer that they didn't know before. Now, uh, to keep in line with the entire video game experience, uh, would you say that your book, The Art of Video Games from Pac-Man to Mass Effect, serves as a strategy guide for the experience or more of an in-game user's manual? Oh, wow, that's a great question. It's probably a good in-game user's manual. You know, a lot of the materials that are in the book are taken directly out of the materials that we have here in the exhibition. It's just the book gave me the opportunity to explain more, to go into further depth and detail about the intent behind a lot of the games that we've grown up playing. Now, video games as an art form have been hotly debated in the media for a couple of years now. One person that stands out in particular are Roger Ebert's comments that video games may be an art form one day, but none of us would live long enough to see it. Of course, we're standing in the American Art Museum of the Smithsonian. So was that kind of a catalyst for you to get this kind of thing started? Or what, what was the dream that started this for you? Well, you know, I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Ebert and his encyclopedic knowledge of the movie industry. But like anything else, you know, there are different forms of media that speak to individuals. And so while some people may believe this to be art, as I do, as I'm sure you do, you know, some may not, and that's okay. The idea here isn't to, you know, finally establish video games are art. It is to offer up the question, it is to examine video games as, an art, as a form of art for a generation that grew up playing this. You know, I've said many times that a lot of us that grew up in the 70s and grew up in the 80s playing these games, writing these games, experiencing their worlds, exploring their narratives, always knew this was an art form. It's just we lacked the vocabulary, we lacked the maturity to describe it as such. And so we have been kind of fumbling for several decades trying to figure out what it meant. And now, in an era where gamers like myself are raising gamers of my own, there was no question in my mind that this is not only an art form, but I believe it is one of the most expressive and uh, you know, broadest forms of art that society has ever had available to it. Now, um, are there any consoles in this room, uh, other than the ones in this room, I'm sorry, that you wish you could have included? I noticed in your keynote address you held up your phone and you talked a lot about mobile gaming, but I didn't see a lot of any handheld or mobile gaming going on in this room. Is there a reason was that that wasn't included? Sure, and the phone we're talking about, of course, is this one with my awesome Famicom uh, controller skin to it. No, the, the goal here wasn't to go ahead and make sure that I, as the guest curator, got everything that I wanted into the exhibition. That wasn't the intent here. The intent here was to show how video games impacted American culture over its 40-year life. So there are systems that are not included in here that, you know, personally, I would have liked to have seen. Systems like the TurboGrafx-16, huge, huge love for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, even the Atari Jaguar, I know there's only, you know, really one great game, Tempest 2000, which people are going to be able to play at the museum over the weekend, which is going to be great, in the courtyard, happy to play with whoever wants to come and play. Um, so, again, it wasn't so much that I got everything that I wanted into this exhibition. That's not what this was about. I wanted to ensure that Everyone that grew up with the love of playing these games, that have an interest in this, saw the things that most represented the things they wanted to see. So a couple of things were missing, but everything in here is beautiful. And then um, as far as the consoles are concerned, we noticed these tags by each console, and they all pretty much mention that these are your personal consoles in here. How are you handling being away from your games for this long a period of time? I'd say about 80% of the, the systems in here are from my personal collection. Um, I'm feeling a little bit of separation anxiety, but I'm so proud and honored to be able to lend these to the museum to help, you know, capture the images and the footage and, and build this experience that, you know, the world will be able to enjoy. And ho I hope that everyone, ex you know, loves them as much as I do. 
Excellent. Our last question. Um, did the ESRB ratings play into the selection of the games that you chose for voting and stuff like that, the games people could play? Because obviously it is a public exhibit and people of all ages will be here. And right now, ESRB ratings are very hotly debated uh, with the Supreme Court case and everything else that recently went through. So did that play into your decision of titles? Um, actually, no. The, the rating system wasn't one that was present in my mind when selecting the titles. What I wanted to do was tell a story. There is a narrative here that shows the evolution of form within genres over time. And so, by selecting those specific genres, I was able to go ahead and discern which titles out of it best represented what I wanted to tell. All of the materials that we have on display here are appropriate for a general audience. Even some games that we have in here that may have a mature rating, we were very careful to make sure that we were highlighting the artistry, highlighting the, the social discussion, highlighting the moral conflict that may exist. And so we've created an exhibition that I think balances the needs of gamers and non-gamers and the general public alike. Well, excellent. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Yep. And stay tuned, Pixel Perfect fans. We're going to have more footage from the exhibit as well as Games Fest all weekend.